welcome to Turn Back the Clock. Today I thought I'd talk about bridges. We had a project a couple of years ago on the history of roads and road transportation and the two researchers discovered a lot of interesting things about our local bridges. I was over in Castlegar last week and I saw the progress being made on the new bridge over there and I thought how long some of us have had to wait for bridges and uh, the people in Castlegar didn't even know they were going to get one across at the place where their ferry used to be but when they get it it'll be very worth it just like the bridge that Nelson had built in 1957 after a long, long wait. Of course, it's very difficult to span our Kootenai River. It's deep, it's fast, and the lake at Nelson is wide. So you can see that it was a major expense for the government to put in bridges. As a matter of fact, in the very early days, uh, ferries carried the people and horses, and that was considered very satisfactory, certainly much more satisfactory than trying to swim your horses and equipment across. The earliest ferries were at uh, Slocan and at uh, just below the Slocan pool, and that served everyone pretty well uh, for, for our area. In Nelson itself, our first bridge that was a major project was in 1890, three or four years after the town was uh, established and it was built by right across where in front of where Eddie Music is and uh, just uh, in over the bridge the valley of Ward Creek which divided the town into east and west as a matter of fact in the early days East Baker and West Baker were natural divisions in the town the the bridge itself was built a wooden structure built by G. O. Buchanan, who was a lumberman from Harrop area, who cut the timbers there and brought them down to Nelson in a boom, pulled by a tug, and he hired a local crew to put up that bridge. Uh, I guess he was a good foreman. Uh, we read a report that said that the construction of the bridge was all very satisfactory, except for the fact that Mr. Buchanan, who was a strict Methodist and a uh, against liquor, didn't break open the barrel of beer or whiskey at the end to celebrate. Other bridges happened in town as well, slowly as the town developed. There was one across in front of, uh, the an by the Animal Block on Victoria Street. There was one up in Fairview on Pine Street and others in Fairview. And slowly those have disappeared as the town has developed. But as far as crossing the, the river and in various places and Kootenai Lake, that took a lot longer. The first major bridge that crossed the river was that Brilliant. And that was put up by the Dukabor community in 1913 and 14. They built it uh, a major project without anyone getting hurt. It was a wonderful work. Uh, concrete, uh, beautifully built uh, suspension bridge, and it served that area between uh, Utshania and Brilliant, the two big Dukabor communities, well, right up until the bridge, the current modern bridge was built in 1957. Uh, one of our local historians, Henry Stevenson, said that on a family vacation his family took, they happened to be the first car over the Brilliant Bridge. And that was in 1917, and I, I thought I'd read you what he said about it. Onward travel seemed like a piece of cake until we reached the Dukabor Bridge at the Kootenai River. Here we were met by Peter the Lordly Verrigan, who was waiting for us, and he adamantly denied passage over the bridge. He said our car was too heavy for the bridge to handle. Just then, a wagon loaded with logs and drawn by a large team of horses crossed over. Dad asked Mr. Verrigan to ask the husky driver to lift one wheel of the wagon. He tried and tried in vain. And then Dad said, try lifting the rear wheel of the car. The man lifted it easily. Mr. Verrigan was now convinced and gave us permission to go, but insisted that Mother would have to carry my sister and I across. Cars, of course, were rare in the early years. And uh, one of our first cars that tried to cross 
was uh, Mr. Wilby on his uh, Cross Canada trip, the, the first Cross Canada by car trip. Uh, he had to be taken down the banks and across on the ferries, and that was very, very difficult. They had to build special structures for wheeling him down to the water side and up the other side. So building a bridge was a pretty important thing. Our next major bridge was at Tagum. And that was built in 1913-14 as well. That was part of a highway development that was starting to happen. The project was built by uh, uh, con bridge contractors. There were 300 piles, 30 to, 500 to 55 feet long, driven into the riverbank to provide a framework for the <laughs> construction. The abutment on the Tagum side comprised 700 cubic yards of concrete, and that weighed 1,500 tons. It was a pretty major development. Some men even had to work down under the water in a compression chamber with compressed air to keep the water out. The result was a 665-foot long bridge with an 18-foot wide roadway. It's quite a neat story about the first t passenger um, traveling across that bridge, and that was a band of gypsies from South America who were traveling to Eastern Canada. They had 30 horse-drawn wagons and they had to get special permission and they had to lay planks across the bridge to get that whole big party across. The bridge served very well with uh, a few major changes. When they built the Coraline Dam in the 30s, they had to, the water was raised and so they had to raise uh, the bridge level as well, 7.5 feet. And this was a major construction job for 25 men who worked for six weeks to raise the bridge. Uh, they did with 16 jacks, each of 50 tons lifting power, and 25 tons of steel framework was set on the piers. That was a really big change. But that made the bridge serve well right up until 1976 when the bridge we now use to, is downriver farther. You can still see the, the foundations of the old Tagum Bridge if you get um, looking down over on the river, just downstream from the present bridge. Both bridges, after they were built, the local community really liked their old bridge and they didn't want a zippy new bridge. And so for four years, both bridges were used. And then finally, maintenance problems and so forth caused the Department of Highways to try decide to take out the old bridge. And it's gone now. Finally, Nelson began to be considered for a bridge. Our story of wanting a bridge goes way back. In 1911, James Johnstone, who had a fruit ranch on the North Shore, had gone to Victoria to petition the government for a bridge going across the West Arm. And he wasn't the first to talk about it. It had been a, a constant desire to have a bridge. People went back and forth by small boat to their residences on the North Shore, and if they lived farther up the lake, of course, they traveled by paddle wheeler or by private boat and launch. So it was, <laughs> it, it was really needed that there be something to cross the river. And we didn't have a ferry either at the time Mr. Johnston went to Victoria, and he tried to convince the government that a ferry was a really bad idea. Uh, maybe he was afraid that that's what we get, because that is what we got. We got a ferry in 1913, and that ferry uh, continued until 1957, when finally we got the bridge. The ferry, uh, of course, started out as a little primitive one. It just held a couple of vehicles and people, and developed into a, a modern one with two uh, sides that carried cars and a little space for shelter for people as well. In 1957, when we got our bridge, it happened to be a toll bridge. Now this was, this was the problem, but the government had so many petitions for bridges all over the province that they decided that they better build them, but that they would have to collect tolls on them. And many local residents remember having to stop at the toll booth and pay their toll on the Nelson Bridge. The cost went up drastically. The first discussions of a bridge for Nelson 
were about $200,000. Of course, this was thinking of a wooden structure of some kind. Going right up into when finally the bridge was built, it was about $4 million. Of course, a wooden bridge would require much more maintenance and changes and uh, to the timbers as they wore out and a lot more maintenance than the uh, metal one. Uh, the, there were a few interesting suggestions over the years. When the CPR re um, built the railway down from Proctor to, to Kootenai Landing, the, there was no more need for the big barges that used to be pulled by the tugs. And uh, in 1931, when a lot of road building was going on on the East Shore and around our area, uh, Colonel Lister suggested that they could take four of the old CPR train barges and hook them together and make a pontoon bridge to cross the Kootenai Lake at Nelson, and that this could be done very cheaply and that this would make available a lot more money. There was an election promise even for a bridge by Premier Ptolemy, and he promised a bridge if there was money in 1930-31, but uh, of course we all know there was no money available during the Depression, and then the war, and it took, as I said, till 1957. So the tolls on the bridge continued until 1963, so that for that first six years, uh, people, commuters, uh, had bought tickets and uh, People paid, I think, 50 cents it was, to, to go on the bridge until April 1st, 1963, when the government took all the tolls off all the bridges in British Columbia and paid out the bridge authority for the, the money that was needed to pay off. It was, actually, the bridges were only about one-third paid for by the tolls. But there were so many bottlenecks and there was a real concerted effort to try to get tourism happening in the province. And so they thought that it was worth it to make that investment in getting the traffic moving faster and not turning off our visitors by charging them extra. So our bridge, our orange bridge, of course, now we all take for granted as being a, a landmark of Nelson. It appears in all our photographs and paintings of Nelson and posters and everything, but it was a hard one dream to get a finally get a bridge in Nelson. And I hope Castlegar enjoys theirs as much as we have ours. Thank you for listening to Turn Back the Clock and we'll see you next time. <laughs>